Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. A event-driven architecture is a way to make your system more extensible and loosely coupled. It allows you to use events to communicate between service boundaries. But what happens when you have a long-running business process or workflow that involves multiple services? If you use RPC, you're going right back to tight coupling, which we were trying to avoid with EDA. So what's the solution? Event choreography. Let me explain how it works. I'd like to thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solace provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solace, check out the link in the description. So if you have a long-running business process or some workflow that you need to do that involves multiple different services, what's the issue with just doing direct RPC communication from service to service? This could be HTTP, gRPC, whatever the case may be. Well, there's latency issues, there's failure issues that I'm about to show, but mainly it's just the tight coupling. And that's why we're trying to use event-driven architecture is to remove that tight coupling. So to illustrate this, and I've showed this in other videos, so I'll kind of go over a little bit more quickly, is if we have a client calling service A and it's performing some action, this is kind of the kickoff of that uh, long running business process or workflow. Let's say we make some state change to our database. Then we need to call service B because it needs to do something. And we don't really know that behind the scenes, it's calling some external service. And then from there, we need to call service C once service B, that call worked. And let's see that it does some type of state change, but we don't really know from service A that service C is actually calling service D and it's doing something, but uh oh, there's a failure. And all this tight coupling, if we've made state changes to different services along the way, how do we now capture that error and then try to roll back or undo or void everything we just did. Because each service has its own database, if there is a failure, it's not like we can just roll back because we don't have a distributed transaction. You're gonna have to write code and deal with this resiliency of dealing with failures in every individual service. When things are working great, it's great, there's no problems. But if there are failures and there are services that are having issues for whatever reason, Basically, because of this tight coupling, your entire system is going to be down. Now, where you first might think to go is just to remove that service to service direct communication and rather add something up front like an orchestrator that understands the workflow and then can synchronously call all the services in order. It can also deal with the failures to understand when those things happen, how it kind of compensates and calls a service again. So what that looks like is we have a client calls the orchestrator, the orchestrator calls service A, there's some state change that happens here. Then after that's completed, it then synchronously is calling service B, which does some external call. And then it's gonna call service C once that's complete. But uh-oh, we have a failure. So at this point, the orchestrator is aware of how to deal with these failures because we've localized all that logic there. And then it can go and do some compensating action to service B to avoid whatever it did. Now, while this sounds better, we really haven't accomplished anything doing this. We still have a high degree of coupling. It's not just from service to service anymore. It's from orchestrator to service because we're still doing all these direct RPC calls. So while it has all the logic to understand if there's a failure, how it may do some compensating action to another service, what happens if that fails? What do we do then? We haven't really accomplished much here. Just like before, if there's service that's unavailable or some type of issue, the entire system might as well be down. And that's all because we still have tight coupling. With the venture of architecture and publish subscribe, we can loosely couple between services. So when our client makes that request to service A and we do some state change to our database, we can then publish an event, an event to our message broker to a specific topic. And from there, our client request is complete. We're done. And service A has just simply published that message. It has no idea if there's any consumers that are gonna subscribe or even care about that event. But there, in my case, there are two. There's service B and service C are both subscribed to that topic, are gonna to receive that event and process it. Service B may call its external service. Maybe service C has some type of issue and it can't process that message, but they're completely independent. That does not affect how service B is gonna handle that message or that service A has anything to do with it. It's done, it's published that message. It, all the consumers will do with it however they need to independently. So with a venture of an architecture, we can take that long running business process, a workflow that we were initially describing, and we can just leverage publishing events and subscribing to events to kind of model that workflow. So what that looks like is when we have our client make that request to service A, we did some type of state change, we publish an event that indicates that happened. At this point, our request is done, but the next kind of step 
a part of our workflow is that service B is going to pick up that very specific event that service A um, published. We're subscribing to that. We need to interact with our external service, do whatever we're going to do. And at this point, we're now going to publish our own event that's going to indicate what that was, what occurred, what, what do we just do a part of that process. So we publish the event back to the broker. And then now independently, completely separate, service C is going to pick up that event. It's going to be subscribing to that. And it's going to be the next part of that workflow, that long running business process. And it may interact with its database. We're no longer tightly coupled like I illustrated before with that central orchestrator. That orchestrator before was making synchronous calls to one service, getting a response, then making a call to another service and getting a response. Now we're just loosely coupled by publishing events and subscribing to events. Now, the big difference here is with failures. If a service is unavailable for any particular reason, well, our, the entire process doesn't fail. Once a service is back available and it can process a message, the process will continue. Our entire system isn't down because we're not as tightly coupled. So is event choreography the silver bullet for dealing with workflows and multiple different services? No, of course not. The challenge here is if you have complex workflows that involve many different services, that's the challenge because you, it's hard to visualize what the workflow actually is because there's no centralized place that's kind of listing out like a recipe of what it actually is. And because of that, if there's a failure somewhere along the way, a part of the process, and it doesn't complete, do you know it? So if you have complex workflows that involve many different services, check out the link in the description where I talk about workflows using asynchronous messaging and an orchestrator. If you have simpler workflows that don't involve as many services, event choreography could be a solution. Thanks to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really do appreciate your support. If you want to get access to a private Discord server or any source code that I show in some videos, check out the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.